Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my show where I offer misguided advice about video games. Game of choice, Hearthstone. My name is Meerkat, and today is Tuesday, March 31st, 2015. I always try to think of the date instead of just looking down at the clock on my monitor. But hey, whatever. Anyways, today is Tuesday, March 31st, 2015, which means two things. Tomorrow, I have to pay rent, and... More importantly, it's the reset of the ladder going into the month of April. So some really exciting things about April. The fact that BlackRock is coming out is hashtag very hype. I'm very excited about that. Um, <laughs> hashtag very hype. That's just, what are we doing in 2015? Using things like phrases, use, saying, ah, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> Why? Anyway, let's get back to the point. So. BlackRock comes out. Ta-da! That's exciting, right? Another thing is, actually, uh, according to Hearthpone.com, I actually saw that uh, there's this new card back coming out for the month of April, and it's like a birthday cupcake card back in honor of Anoyotron. I don't really know if I actually believe that. Here's the thing. Blizzard has been known to do jokes for April Fool's, and I would not be surprised in the slightest if that's exactly what we're seeing here. But hey, I have been known to be wrong, and in this case, that might be one of those situations. Anyways, let's go ahead and move right along into the actual deck, the Hobgoblin Mage deck. Now, I Hob you. This is a really weird deck, so if you're looking for something that's a little bit different, a little bit off the charts than what you're used to, definitely recommend you check out the deck. If you want a deck that you're going to be continually winning with, I wouldn't recommend playing this deck the entire month of April. In fact, the new expansion is going to be coming out, so this deck will probably be completely arbitrary, but it is nonetheless fun as of right now and might be for the next two days until the expansion does come out. So, let's go ahead and move right along here. We got two Argent Squires, two Mana Worms, two Frostbolts, two Anoyotrons, one Echoing Ooze, one Iron Beak Owl, two Mad Scientists, two Duplicates, one Big Game Hunter for Big bomb removal uh blood knight for the two anoitrons and the two Argent squires if you can pull out the uh, divine wombo combo uh battle cry and then you got uh, two echo of medivs a fireball and a polymorph this is kind of a unique combo a lot of mage decks don't have one of both they usually have two of one kind two and one of the other kind or they've got two and two i've i'm not as familiar with seeing one and one but it seems to work out okay here. Um, if anything, I would recommend getting rid of the Blood Knight in place for a second Fireball. Primarily because out of all the games that I've played with this deck, I've not actually been able to pull off a decent battle cry. I mean, even if I've got a 6-6 six, six for 3, that's an amazing card. But, <laughs> I mean, once you're, it's kind of situational. And once you've gone through these guys, I don't know. I could be wrong. But the point is, you have one Fireball, one Polymorph. Interesting setup. It does seem to work. I could use an extra Fireball. All right, I said it. I could use an extra Fireball. There, it said. Uh, two Piloted Shredders for sticky cards. One Anti-Killbot to continue healing you up throughout the game. One Lotha to clutch your opponent from spells. Two Sledge Belchers for some more sticky and taunt presence. A Sylvanas Windrunner and a Dr. Boom. I don't even know why I say those cards anymore at the end of the deck. I mean, I can understand some decks don't really run Sylvanas, Sylvanas Windrunner. But Dr. Boom, come on, that's like a gimme. So whenever you create a deck, you get 29 options because the third, <laughs> I got 29 problems, but Dr. Boom ain't one because he's in every single deck. Anyways, um, just a couple of things to throw out there real quick. So the Echo of Mediv and the Duplicate, this is the type of deck where if you can pull off the Hobgoblin Tricks, with the deck, really fun, especially if you actually drop down a Dr. Boom. Even though you haven't played the Hobgoblin, the Hobgoblin is not going to trigger on the battle cry effect of the summoning of the Boom Bots. But if you do copy the Boom Bots, you're going to get 3 3 Boom Bots instead of 1 1, which is actually kind of potent, to be honest with you. But, anyways, let's go ahead and back out of here and hop into a match, shall we? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Whoa. Ooh, what am I doing? I don't even know. So BlackRock coming out, pretty excited about that. Very, very excited. A lot of cool cards out there. And I cannot believe you're going to be able to turn into Ragnaros. How cool is that? Although somebody was telling me that you can actually 
go from 8 hit points up to 15 hit points with an Alex Straza? I don't think that's true. I could be wrong. Prove me wrong if that is the case. Holy cow, my cats are running around. It's a little scary right now. Okay, so what do you want to mulligan with this mage deck? Oh my goodness, get out! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Sorry, I do apologize. I could get a better mount for my camera because it wobbles around a lot, especially when my cat runs like a bat out of hell from my bedroom to the cat tower. But whatever. Anyways, um, okay, so I'm going to toss back these two cards. I'm going to keep the Echoing Ooze and the Argent Squire just for some early board presence. Pilot Detroiter is definitely going to come in handy. I could probably use that on turn three. Sylvanas Windrunner, always a good card to have. Not necessarily for the mulligan, but meh. What are you going to do? I am ready. Okay. I think it's quite clear what we do here. We drop down the Argent Squire and we end the turn. So now we got something on the board and we've got something that can kill off his guy without actually getting killed. Next turn I could drop down the Echoing Ooze. Okay, there goes the Earth Shock. Not a big deal. I'm actually A-OK -okay with that. If he uses the Earth Shock on my Argent Squire, not a big deal. Totally not a big deal, especially when I lay down the Echoing Ooze. Now I've got two one twos. I can easily trade one of them out. So there you go. It's very possible that he actually might be dropping down the two taunt cards, the wolf, the wolf taunt cards. What are they called? Okay, well it doesn't matter. He didn't drop them anyways. He's probably gonna attack the face. Of course he would. That's a proper value. But like you know, whatever. Okay, actually here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this just so I can actually buff up my mana worm. My computer is acting really slow right now. I do apologize for that. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay, Rock Biter Weapon. He's going to be getting rid of the Mana Worm before it gets a little too out of control for his liking. He's down to three or four cards. He's down to three cards in his hand. I am three cards and a coin going up to four. How about that? I got a hobgoblin. Too bad I don't have anything to play it with. So I'm gonna go in and just drop down the sil or uh, the piloted treader, I should say. Um, hobgoblin would have been great for the echoing and news and argent squire. Perhaps I should have saved those two cards for that exact reason. But I wanted board control, and I've got enough mid to late game cards that I'm okay with sacrificing some of the cheaper cards, even if it means I won't get the combo off the hobgoblin. Oh, cool. That's a cool card to get in return. Okay, so we're gonna drop down Hobgoblin, drop down Argent Squire, and I think, hmm, do I wanna drop a coin? Is it just kind of a waste to ping into that? I think it is, to be honest with you. Let's go ahead and just end the turn. I would rather let him attack into the actual Blood Mage Thalanos rather than me just sacrificing it right off the bat. Unless he does silence it with a stupid Earth Shock. Okay, he's not going to be doing that. But he probably, yep, he's definitely going to be attacking into it as I would. Makes a whole lot of sense if you do ask me. And I'm going to pick this guy off. I'm going to attack the Flame Tongue Totem. For obviously good reason. I'm gonna hold on to the polymorph. There's no need to use it right now. I'm gonna get rid of his fire elemental with a fireball, and I'm gonna end the turn. Now, here's the thing I could have done a duplicate, except I really don't want to have two more of those guys unless I knew for a fact that I actually actually am gonna be getting a hobgoblin. Considering he's the last one, yeah. Not necessarily a big fan of that fact. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do the duplicate. I'd much rather have two of these guys. Let's go ahead and attack into him, sacrifice my Divine Shield. I'm okay with that. He might actually be doing one of those Lightning Storms, uh, which would actually kind of suck right now, because I, then I would get two more of the Argent Squires. But, eh, whatever. At least now, if he does attack into that guy with his Dr. Boom, that means I get to pick him off with my Fire Blast. No harm done, and nope, looks like he's going to be doing a crackle for five points of damage, exactly how much help my Sludge Bolter had, but it's okay, because I have an ace up my sleeve with the two more Sludge Bolters I get from Duplicate. Woohoo! 
Looks like he did not get the effective trade value that he was hoping for out of that guy. Looks like he did get... Oh, well, he is actually going to be pulling down seven points of damage to my face, which is really going to suck. And ouch, here it goes. Okay. I think it's pretty obvious that... Do I want to drop a big game hunter here? He's already down to four hit points. It kind of really sucks. I don't think I have much of a choice here. I'm going to have to go ahead and get rid of that guy. Let's drop down the taunt, pick off his little taunt totem, end the turn. So if he does, if he is able to bump that guy up, he's going to have to either hex this or he's going to have to actually uh, silence it in order to get the efficiency that he wants out of this guy. Now, I definitely want to get rid of his whirling zapomatic, especially considering the fact that his death rattle is going to give him two extra points of damage. And holy moly, it looks like he's definitely going to be coming through. But unfortunately for him, he is not going to be able to get the actual... Uh, value out of his Whirling Zapomatic that he was hoping to get because I'm going to pick it off. Or not. I did not see that. <laughs> I fight. Mm. I fight. Yeah, let's just go ahead and pick that guy off. Just going to pick him off. Drop down Sludge Belcher. Drop down another Mad Scientist. Ping into him for one point of damage. So now we're really going to start pulling ahead in the game here. I've got a Sylvanas Windrunner in my hand, so if he does drop down some crazy card like a Ragnaros or something like that, I'm going to feel pretty confident in being able to take it over. Uh, I've got my two Echo of Medivs. I've got another Duplicate. I've still got the Sludge Bolter here. Okay. Looks like he definitely is going for some crazy tricks here. At the start of your turn, if you have at least three mechs, destroy them all and become Voltron. Okay, so I'm definitely going to be playing Sylvanas the Sand. No time for games. And let's go ahead and trade here. Okay, got a duplicate. Let's go ahead and pick into him. Let's attack into the face. End the turn. We'll see what, what's going to happen here. Next turn, I could drop down a Lothab. But he's in a lot of trouble, regardless of what it is that I do. He's got a lot of opportunity to... Actually, wait, let me rephrase that. He doesn't have a lot of opportunity to be able to pull back forward. So I'm feeling pretty confident about our choices here. In fact, what I'm going to do... Beautiful! Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Let's just go ahead and... Nope, let's not do that. Let's attack into you. Let's attack into you. Let's steal your mega dude over there. Okay, now you're mine. All right, cool. And he surrenders! Dun, 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 dun. And I'm rank 12. It is a pitiful rank. I do apologize, but I don't care anymore <laughs> because tomorrow's this reset of the ladder. So there you go. There's the Hobgoblin deck, even though you didn't really see much Hobgoblin action. That's kind of why it's like, meh. The deck is fun. It's different. But the win conditions that you need in order to play Hobgoblin are minimal. Or, or actually, let me that's an inaccurate statement. What I'm trying to say is Hobgoblin, with this particular deck as a mage, you're not actually going to be winning by overwhelming your opponent with little 1-1 one -one guys that get buffed up from the Hobgoblin. Um, it is a win condition where you can win that way, but you're not going to be winning all the time. In fact, it's very rare that I do win that way. Unlike the Hobgoblin uh, Paladin deck, the Raffledon deck that I showcased before, which is a really fun deck and actually synergizes very well with the Paladin abilities, unlike the Mage abilities, um, at least less so with the Mage and more so with the, the Paladin. Um, it, it, it works better for Paladin and the Hobgoblin doesn't work as well for Mage, but it's an interesting idea. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope you learned something, if nothing else, at least what not to do when uh, you watch me make my mistakes. And yeah, leave any uh, suggestions or comments in the suggestion comment box below. And um, yeah, please uh, hit the like button if you would. I'm trying to gear up my show here. And yeah, let me know if there's any particular deck you'd like to show, you'd like me to have uh, showcase. And uh, until next time, my name is Meerkat.